for this? You're so cute. Hey guys, it's Christina and I'm glad to be back. I'm sorry I went MIA during the November reflections, but my baby boy is here. He's happy, he's healthy and doing great. Um, he'll be one month tomorrow and I can't believe how quickly time flies. And I can't believe there's only 10 days till Christmas. So for the next 10 days, I'll be sharing my thoughts and reflections. So feel free to grab a cup of tea or coffee and spend this time with me. I'd love that especially since I'm supposed to still be resting. So my question for you is this, when you die and go to heaven, are there some people you'd like to meet? Like family members, loved ones, saints. What about some of the heroes from the Bible? Like Abraham, Moses, Ruth, King David, John the Baptist, the disciples. Personally, I'd love to meet Daniel, uh, Elijah, and probably Deborah, just to name a few. Now imagine these heroes being excited and patiently waiting just to meet you. Yeah, I said it. You see, in today's gospel, we see the love Jesus had for John the Baptist. He's both defending and praising John by declaring him to be more than just a prophet. What makes John the Baptist so great? Is it because he's the second cousin to Jesus or because he was the last prophet? Well, there are a few reasons, but let's go back in history first. Throughout the history of Israel, God sent his prophets over and over again to speak his word to them. But over and over again, the Israelites ignored God's words and rebelled against him. They even killed some of the prophets. God kept warning his people if they continue to rebel against him and ignore or harm his prophets, he would stop sending them prophets. And that's exactly what happened. So for the next 400 years, there was radio silence, not a single prophet to be seen or heard. Sure, there were some false prophets that showed up, but people were soon to realize they were fake. As a result, while waiting for the next prophet, the Jewish people became hypervigilant in obeying the laws when they realized they no longer have a prophetic voice to keep them on track. And then one day there was a voice, a voice calling out in the wilderness. Why was John so great? It definitely wasn't his fashion sense. I mean, the man wore clothing made out of camel's hair. Actually, who knows? It could have been. Anyways, I digress. So we know the first reason was the fact that he was the first prophet in 400 years. And not only that, he was the only prophet who had prophecies written about him. Every other prophet was prophesying Christ's coming and John had prophecies written about his coming. <coughs> yes, you are. Now I have to give you to daddy. <coughs> Another reason was that he would actually prepare the way for the Messiah, whereas the other prophets only spoke about the coming of the Messiah. I can just imagine how eagerly all the other prophets longed to see what John was seeing. But they all died in faith. The fact that John was alive when the Messiah arrived would make him the greatest of all the prophets. So we have established that John is one of the greatest prophets of all time. And then we have Jesus who's telling us that we can be greater than John. What? See, the reason why we are greater than John is because we are part of the kingdom of God. Although it is great to be in the kingdom of God, we can either sit by the gates and enjoy the view or we can get in and explore what it has to offer. If it's good to even be the least in the kingdom, then imagine how much better it would be to be great in the kingdom. There are so many riches for us to experience there. God has given these riches to all those who are in his kingdom. If you believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life, you are in the kingdom. But are we experiencing these riches is the question. Don't just sit there by the gates. Get in and enter into your inheritance and see all that God has prepared for you. There were only two responses to John's teaching. Repentance or remaining. Some people chose to repent of their sins while others chose to remain in theirs. Getting baptized and going underwater symbolized their death to the old way of life and a resurrection to the new. So how will you respond to God's call today? Here are a few points to take away from the gospel today. Number one. The Pharisees were so blinded by their own pride and beliefs that they could not accept the truth. They couldn't even see the truth, even if it was right in front of them. We have our own blind spots, perhaps created by our own pride and unbelief. Let's look at the things in our lives that's hindering us from seeing the truth this Christmas. Number two, the simple reason why so many people went to see John the Baptist was because he was telling the truth. He spoke the truth with such conviction that he wasn't afraid of anyone or anything. He spoke what he needed to say and to the people who needed to hear it. When I say he spoke the truth, it means just that. He spoke the truth, not his truth, the truth. This Christmas season, let's look to the one who said, I am the truth. 
I think we're up to number three. John's preaching represents a last minute chance to make themselves fit for the coming of the Lord. The Pharisees were not open for what John was saying. And as a result, they put themselves outside of what God was offering, the kingdom of God. This each other. As we prepare ourselves to welcome Jesus this Christmas, let's look into our lives and see if we are fit for the second coming of Jesus or if there are any things that we can change. And finally, what made John so great was his readiness to take second place and to point people to Christ. When life presents us with opportunities to take second place, do we take it without much thought? Are we happy with that position? Do we feel the affirmation that Jesus gave John? Jesus reminds us that people encountered a sign of God's presence in John. When people look at us, do they see someone who's consistently and fearlessly proclaiming Christ in everything we do and say? Thanks for staying till the end. I appreciate it. And I pray you experience Christ this Christmas. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care and God bless.